Hey guys, to finish this piece off, I used the scroll insert brush I made earlier, and I just start plopping down the different scroll shapes. But the first thing I do is place down a single swirl or single shape, then I measure how thick it is with the transpose line so that I know it'll be thick enough for printing and casting. Here the scrolls end up being about 0.5 millimeters thick and about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimeters deep. I probably could have gotten away with half that size and still been okay, but I wanted to keep it simple. I feel like one of the keys to making nice looking scroll work is to have your shapes flow off one another. You don't want to end up creating 90 degree angles or sharp angles or anything like that. And also you want to keep your negative space even throughout the design. You don't want to put too many things in one spot and make it cluttered. And also making sure that the shapes you're putting down are relatively the same size. You don't want to have one small swirl next to a really large swirl, unless you're keeping that consistent throughout your pattern. And to move around and deform each of the shapes, I'm just using the move brush and the transpose line. And unfortunately in my finished piece, all these nice sharp peaks on this scroll work gets polished down. So in the future I might tweak the brush just a little bit so that it doesn't get so rounded after uh, polishing. And unfortunately ZBrush crashed while I was recording the forehead part, so I lost that footage. But it's the same as the side of the ring, and I didn't use symmetry for the forehead. Here I'm adding more scroll pattern into the cheek area, and leaving in the negative space. It was a little bit of a gamble that didn't really end up working out too well, and I'll explain more on that in a little bit. Once I had the modeling done, I had it printed on a Solus 3D printer at 25 microns. I also sized it down quite a bit, making it a good size for a pinky ring. The print came out really nice. Not a whole lot of print lines. And then after curing it under a UV light for a little bit, I sprued it up with wax. And I also added a few extra sprue gates under the chin and the back of the skull. I find that it helps with burning out the resin. It probably wouldn't be necessary if this was a wax ring. And then I stick it in a flask and get it ready for investment. And I use a vacuum chamber to draw out all the air bubbles from the investment. And then I just let it harden and cure for a few hours before I stick it in the oven. And then after letting the flask burn out for a couple hours, we get it ready for casting. Here you can see we're heating the silver in a crucible with the torch. Once it's melted, we stick the flask in this spinning contraption and let it go. And the melted silver just gets thrown into the flask. After it's done spinning, we let it cool for a few minutes before we quench it. And here's our little quenching bucket. And the investment falls apart pretty easily in water. And once it's cool, it's pretty easy to clean out the investment. And then here's the silver skull ring right out of the investment. And we use a pickle pot and an ultrasonic to completely clean the ring of the investment. And then once we got it all cleaned up, we took it straight to the polishing wheel, just to see how it would look. And I was surprised that there was almost no print lines after our polishing. Because usually we end up with some print lines that we have to sand down. But this came out real smooth. And the darkened recesses here is just the polishing compound, but it gives a nice preview of what the finished ring will look like. And then here it is finished. This is what the ring looks like after some sanding, polishing, and a patina finish. But here you can actually see that the cast didn't come out all that great, and it's mostly my fault. Because the negative space in between the scrolls on the cheeks was so small, it ended up breaking off in the investment when the metal was thrown. So all throughout the ring, there are tiny little bits of investment that broke off. And that's why I got pitting all over the place. All these little spots, that's where the broken investment got cleaned out. I probably could have just used a harder investment, and it might have been okay. And also because I scaled the ring down from my original design, those negative spaces were smaller. 
Or I could have just filled in those spaces with some sort of solid background, and it probably would have been okay too. But overall, it doesn't look that bad. And this ring was printed and cast at Hutcherson Goldsmithing, and I'll leave a link in the description below. And thanks for watching.